address it when it comes. He is going to want to still see this very likely. Yeah, I'm not saying not addressing this. It just it looks like we are couldn't uh, make consensus on how to address it. Right? It's actually yeah, it's, yeah. Well, the, um, the, we don't have a solution yet for one of the problems. I'm hoping Ben will join. So today, uh, what I thought we'll do something a little differently. Good morning, uh, Sid. Hey, hey, Ben. Good morning. So, uh, uh, Shing. Um, so, in order to reach consensus, I'm thinking, I think it'll help if we visually can look at what the structures are going to look like. Um, uh, yeah, I think so, because like, <laughs> every time after the meeting, I don't remember. <laughs> but, yeah. At least one, one week later, I don't remember what was discussed, actually. <laughs> Maybe oh, I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, that's totally understandable. Um, okay, so let's let's try that today. Um, uh, can you give me host permissions, uh, Shane, please? I'm sorry, huh? What? host permissions can you give me host oh i did not oh sorry to share screen uh, yes yes okay all right perfect all right mm. okay so let's talk about let, let's actually live do this um i, I want to see um how we're going to represent uh the different fields and uh clear up uh the issues we've been seeing with with workload identity so let, let's start with uh, what, what we've got so far uh for access key and secret key and then we'll go into workload identity uh, so Sid, can we start from bucket class then go to bucket access like like instead of you mean access class and then bucket access uh, like I mean bucket class like you want to have some fields in bucket right or like we are discussing about bucket and the bucket access class okay so uh, okay, okay can you um, help me get started so are you saying that uh, okay so uh, what field did you uh -huh. uh, first we'll go with the bucket class what are the parameters then we'll go to the bucket and bucket request then we'll go to the bucket access that will have more clarity than going from bucket access to upper level right sure sure that's that's fine by me um we can start with the uh, bucket request actually uh bucket class really doesn't have much information other than provisioner um and then it has uh uh let me try and remember this um parameters um that's about it uh and protocol Yeah, that's about it in, in the bucket class. Let me also open up the cap just in case I'm forgetting something. Uh, so let's start here. And uh, retention policy, deletion policy. So again, the pro um, yeah, we moved the protocol back here. This one's not updated. Um, deletion policy. All right, so that's what goes into bucket class. I yeah, this is straightforward. Um, bucket request currently simply just says uh, bucket class. And right now it doesn't say anything else. It doesn't say it wants um, workload identity or access key secret key, nothing like that. And this just, one is just to be pedantic, it, it's bucket class name, I think. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. No worries. Um all right, what else we got here that is relevant? Okay. So let's go into bucket access. So bucket access is going to have the easy one bucket access class name. Um, really, that's all it had before. In the bucket name, or be your name. You just called it, yeah. All right, so.
so this, this is kind of all we had uh we had a ex um, access secret access credential secret uh name of the secret name we had something like that um let me just see what would that do uh it would let you know uh it's it's for denoting the name of the bucket, bucket request or bucket claim yeah credential secret name bucket access class name bucket name yeah um credential secret name so with access key secret key that's where the secret would be stored And Wait, uh, I, I, hold on. This is this is totally new to me, so I'm trying to understand it. So, the end user mm -hmm. specifies the name of a secret that mm -hmm. doesn't. That does it contain anything? Yeah, it's it's the name of the secret that will go into the pod. Right, but does it have to exist at the no. time you create? No, it doesn't. Who, who who creates it? Because you'll create it. Okay, so this is a way for the user to tell Cozy what secret to create. Yep. But, but, but the only reason you need that is because today we don't have like a CSI driver that will automatically find the secret and plumb it in for you. Is that, no, that that's that, the logic? No, the, uh, the reason we need it is because we, uh, yeah, there's no CSI driver, but uh, we, we need a way to prevent the pod from starting up until the secret is ready. Right, but I mean, I way 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 back at the beginning the the plan was like the pod would refer directly to the bucket access and there'd be some csi driver that would know when the bucket access was provisioned and be able to extract the actual secret name and do all we the don't, plumbing we don't, right? that, that, that was that was the plan that was, that was long back we, we moved away okay. From, yeah okay so 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 mm -hmm. the plan now is there is no magic it, you just have to handle the secret yourself yeah but then who who makes sure that the secret's in the right or has the right fields and is mounted in the right place and that's cozy yeah. so so they they decide where they want the uh, secret to show up in the pod cozy right. can't decide that for them yeah, yeah they, they have to specify some base path but then everything under that path should be tightly specified by us yeah that's true that that is how it's being done okay so so, so you give us an empty secret or a secret that doesn't exist and we fill it with with some well-defined stuff and then you get to decide where to plumb that into your pod yeah and 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 the secret has to be in the same namespace as the rest of this stuff right which means that the cozy driver has right access to every secret in the system basically. yeah yeah all right Just all right, right. <laughs> yeah so yeah so that's how we've been doing it all right, so now let's get into uh, bucket access class. I just copied all the fields. It doesn't have these fields. Um, let me see what, what's there right now. Oh, just parameters. All right. So we can specify what kind of, uh, yeah, let's, let's start with what you're gonna specify here. So far only parameters was needed because we just assumed it's always access key, secret key. Not anymore though. So now we have two authentication styles. Um, let's just say key or IAM. This is not this is not the official word. But just just go with it. The parameters just uh, opaque string string map. Um, what else goes in here? So, so if we had to specify workload identity, what else would you need to um, define here? Well, I, I was outside of the authentication style, like the bucket access class is how you distinguish between like read only access or read write access. I don't know if that has to be done in a purely opaque way or if there's a way to do that in a way that works across all implementations. That isn't, that's the kind of reason we went opaque, uh, because, okay. yeah. So, so the idea is, is the actual details of the access are not a top level field, they're, they're mm -hmm. they have to be opaque. Yeah. Okay. 
So then, I mean, I, where we left the last meeting was that we were stuck on this question of who gets to specify what the what the um, authentication type is going to be and how how the user face how the Kubernetes facing API deals with um, you know if there's multiple users in a namespace how do you know which one if you don't care about the user then like what's the point of that field and all of those questions yeah um, let's then answer them now so so, uh, so at that point we had said that like you don't get to specify key versus I am in the BAC that it's up to the driver but that that's that was one of the proposals and if, if we want to change yeah, yeah. that no, no, we, we don't have to. No. So, yeah, I just wrote this down, but it's still up for discussion. Um, so let's take it out, go back to where we were. So if, if the driver gets to specify it, and if it's completely implicit, where the bucket access uh, doesn't know what it's going to get. Um, I mean, isn't it better to specify it here, but have the admin do it? And then Say, say the admin uh, wants this and, and they well, say I am style. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Right, but, but the problem is the two sources of truth problem, right? If the admin says one thing here, but the driver says something else, who wins? Well, that's the admin's problem, right? Because you can, you can do that with any, any driver and any, any, uh, you know, any feature in Kubernetes. I, I could set up okay. a CSI driver that, that uh, uh, has, uh, you know, that, that, that's expecting a feature that's not provided by, by the driver. Like I can, I could set up a storage. Right. Yeah. No, I, I just, I mean, I, I don't disagree. I'm just wanting to call that out that, that now we're saying there's two sources of truth and what we're saying is if they don't match, it breaks and that's, yeah. that's by design. So yeah, but that's, that's, that's okay. Problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's reasonable. Um, so let's just say we go with this, you know what, we can actually reuse credential secret name regardless. Because uh, uh, what ends up going into the pod uh, with workload identity is, uh, you know, as a token. What if uh, what if we we set the token to be in, in in the credential secret name? So so with access key secret key again it goes into credential secret name. That's pretty straightforward. But with IAM style access. Um, there's a token provided to the pod, and then that token is uh, associated with a workload identity in the backend. Um, so far, we were providing the token using service account, so it goes into a standard spot. Um, what if we said it will go through the credential secret? Uh, like, so whether it will work, like IAM, like the, whether it will look for the token in the service account. So there's a mapping, as far as I remember, you said there's a mapping between the service account and the uh, workload identity manager, like mm -hmm. some policy or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just right now it looks for it in a standard spot, but we could go update the SDKs. But but the the pod is still going to have a service account. So are you suggesting that in the so we don't mess with that? Yeah, yeah, we don't mess with that service account. We let it be. If they want to have a different service account, they can do it. It's just but, but, but if they want to have if they just want to say use the service account of the pod, you're saying you're going to end up getting two copies of that token, one to the normal pod service account place, and a second one plumbed in by Cozy. Is that that's what we're saying? Like so, whether they match or not, you're going to have two of them. <laughs> um, yeah. So Maybe because 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 service accounts are like a first class feature of pods, and the kubelet plums in the token by default unless you tell it not to in a standard you, place. Can you associate <laughs> one service account with multiple uh, authentication credentials? Like, can I plumb one service account to be uh, associated with the workload identity and also associated with uh, a bunch of cluster roles. That's possible, right? So I, I don't really ever need more than one service account, right? So, so, so the, the yeah, I mean, under normal circumstances, yeah, a service account has like one token that is associated with it. And I think it, it can be rotated. You can rotate that token, but, but like Kubernetes just deals with the service account and, and it knows what it's, what its roles are and its cluster roles are. And the the only purpose of the token is so that 
the HTTPS client that goes and talks to Kubernetes API can like can authenticate as as the role, and yeah. the token is basically your secret. And I, I I'm not sure of how it works, but I think that in a cloud context, like if you're running in Azure or GCP or whatever, that that token can be like the same token that you use for the rest of Google or Microsoft's APIs, I think. And, and that there's just some magic to make sure that, you know, the service account gets a Google token instead of or whatever Kubernetes would have given you. Um, I, I don't know the details of that though, but, but my, my presumption had been that we would be piggybacking on the actual service account token when using IAM and we would not be plumbing anything into the pod at all. You'd just be saying, or, well, I mean, no, we would plumb in something that said, you're using I am go go find your service account token, and but like no actual secret data would come in. It would just be a, a you know a bucket.json that gave you your regular bucket information and then directed you to go use your service account token instead of providing you a secret. Yeah. So. Because mm. that, that's our downward API, right? Is what we're providing down sure. is basically the contents of the secret. But there's nothing actually secret in the case of when you're doing I am because it's just the bucket details and a pointer to, to use your service account. <laughs> that works, it was just a suggestion, but yeah, that works. So so let's say we go with service account tokens here uh, as the other um, service account name, um, and this gets plumbed into the pod. So we don't have, so what we're saying right now is we don't have this risk of uh, uh, occupying a service account token and, and the pod not being able to utilize a different one. So. We're saying pods don't need multiple service account tokens. And, and I think that's true. Well, I, I don't think you plumb in the service account name because because the, the pod has a service account name as, as a built-in field, right? Like we can't change that. That is the way it works. Yeah, you can change that. No, no, I, I'm saying like the pod has a service account field. It's going to have a value. Like it, and it's going to be up to you to ensure that the value that's specified in the pod matches the value that's set on the BA. Because if they yeah. don't, yeah. Just, we're not going to know and it's just going to break. Right. Um, and that, I mean, I don't know how I feel about that. It kind of feels bad. Isn't that the same with secrets also? Well, there's a default service account, though, if it's not specified in the pod that we need. To okay. Do. Yeah, that's like the namespace service account. So everyone in the namespace yeah. gets it. If you... Yeah. But, 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 but the point I'm trying to make is like, we can't control which service account gets plumbed into the pod. That's controlled by the guy who creates the pod. Yeah, he either allows the default to be selected or he picks one. Yeah, so, secrets, what's the difference? Huh? It's the same with credential secret. Credential secret. But so secret won't be created. Like the secret will be created by the co right? Like here, the service account need to be created before. That's the difference. That's well, I, I guess well, the argument I'm making is if I create a bucket access and set the service account name to Alice, mm -hmm. and then I create a pod and I set the service account name to Bob, mm -hmm. but I refer to the bucket access that I just it's created. Not like, to bucket access. That, that's the well, I, I refer to the secret that was specified by the bucket access. Like there is no way for us to notice that Bob and Alice are not the same, and we'll just allow the pod to start up. We'll plumb the secret in. They'll try to access the bucket, and it's gonna and it'll fail because it'll be wrong wrong service account, right? And, and, and nowhere along that path do we have an opportunity to catch it and, and say, this is an error. We just have, it just gets all the way to the access denied when they try to use their token to authenticate because there's no control over, you know, them being the same. They're two separate objects with two separate fields and no cross-checking. That, and that, well, I mean, that, 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 They don't have to specify both, right? It's either or. Well, you know, the, the, the one you specify for the pod is either what you specify or it's a default, in which case it falls back to the namespaces, but it's going to be one of those two. No, no, in no, no, in no case not. is it going to be no, the no. same as the bucket access unless That's you make it I mean. the same. So one, one valid configuration is never, you know, not setting this at all. So there's just service account name or just credential secret. So if it's just service account name, you don't have that risk where you specify both and they don't match. Yeah, you do, because yeah. the service account name in the bucket access could be Alice, and the pod name could be Bob. Yeah, but but that's a and, use error at that point. 
So. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm saying it is a user error, but but the problem is, is it's a user error that no one catches until the workload just fails. Like there's no controller that will notice that and say, this is an error. You need to fix it. It'll just go all the way to the point where you'll fire up your pod and you'll get a weird authentication error and you'll be able to say, that's that's strange. Why why can't I authenticate? And then you'll probably yell at somebody. <laughs> What about how 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 is that different from services and how they how they uh, you know use labels? Like you know, there's nobody catching it if you use the wrong labels and you can't route. Perhaps not. I I don't know. I mean, it's okay. It's just, right? Yeah, it's just a user experience problem. And, and and again, to get back to the issue from the end of the last meeting, uh -huh. the thing that makes me nervous is like. The service account name is totally irrelevant if you're using access key secret, right? Then what yeah. it doesn't matter what you put there, it's just gonna get ignored. Um, but, and that, that, that does make me comfortable. I, I do believe you still need the, the secret name or the, the credential secret name because you still have to plumb something into that, into that uh, pod that contains the bucket information. We can do it volume style. So the way volume claims are in, in pods, um, you specify um, kind of one of the multiple types. Um, so we could make the field look like it's either service account name or um, see, credential secret name. No, I, I'm saying you need credential secret name no matter what, because the pod is going to take a credential secret name and plumb it in somewhere, no matter what authentication style you're using. Because that's how, but that, that's how bucket.json gets into the pod. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so you, you always have credential secret name and it's not, and maybe credential secret name is a bad name because it's more than credentials. It's going to be all of the downward API metadata is going to be in that secret. Um, and, and, and and I had overlooked that because I had forgotten that we moved away from having a, a CSI driver yeah. um, and we were just using secrets. So, so that means basically our downward API amounts to what we put into that secret, the exact format of, of the, the values yeah, and the names of the keys yeah. and, and everything. And so, um, so it had, that, that's gonna be something that's always present 100% of the time, no matter what you're doing, you're gonna have one of those secrets. It's gonna get plumbed in. It's gonna have a format that you can rely on. And in some cases, it'll contain an access key secret, and in other cases, it won't. And it'll tell you, "Hey, go use your, go use your token." And 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 hopefully, you picked the right token, <laughs> which which makes me nervous. Okay, um, let's uh, uh, let's write this out also. So here we have just some metadata. Um, I don't think if this is needed, just bucket name. Um, endpoint. Um, so we say, yeah, here, here we can explain. Here we can have a field that yeah. really says use service account or. Yeah. Service account or uh, what's the other one? Access key secret. And then if it's access key secret, then your access key and secret key are embedded here. Uh, here or like different file or same file? Well, I, I would have liked a different file, but again, that was all based on the assumption that we had like some CSI driver that got to configure this stuff for you. Um, if it's if it's literally just a pre-made secret that we're plumbing in, we don't have any opportunity to invoke anything special. And we kind of are forced to just embed things yeah. in, in a flat format, which is suboptimal, but maybe it's worth That's it. Complex. Yeah. I mean, this secret itself might be stored in some secret store and plumbed in through some CSI secrets driver, depending on how you set up your secrets, but but that's all implementation details. From our perspective, it's all just yeah. one secret object that gets plumbed into one place. All right, so this is a bare minimal setup that should work, right? Yeah. 
You haven't put anything for bucket yet. Bucket name and point. And a uh, and the bucket access. So so you you specified the the spec for the bucket access, but we we had said that there's a bunch of important stuff in the status of the bucket access. If uh if we're not having B A and B A R. Have account ID. Um, yeah, we have account ID, bucket name, and just conditions. That's all we need here. I, I would think account ID is the most important one. But, but why, if we have it up, up top, why down here too? Account ID? Yeah. Account ID, we don't know yet, right? Because the, the, the credentials are going to get generated and then we're going to have account ID stored here and we need to revoke access. This is the identifier. This is the handle with which we revoke it. Oh, so this is some opaque thing mm -hmm. from the CSI side, yeah. or cozy side. Yeah. Um, if you're using I am, is it the same as the service account name? It's still it yeah. It's still it's still a, a single string identifier. But is it the same as the service account name, or is it different? No, it's not the same as service account name. It's 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 different. Okay, so so if, if I'm using I am and I create a bucket access but for Alice, account ID is going to come back some UUID potentially. Yeah, something like that. Probably base 64 encoded string like that. Okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> this looks good. Um, so last week, what was the what was the what was the uh, argument about? So we were trying to decide um, uh, so what are the last, different. Uh -huh. So if I remember correctly, the issue was like, where do you want to put the service account name and the portability issue? So if you specify like the application port first choose to use a secret name access key, and when it moves to a different cluster, it uh, it plan to use the service like identity manager account authentication. How we handle those scenarios? Okay, okay. Let's talk about portability and uh, yeah, let's start with portability. So uh, I, let's say we move um, provisionals here. Um, let's say we move uh, so so portability in the sense um, using the same bucket access and bucket request but changing the provisional. Um, not really porting the bucket itself, like not putting an existing bucket. Right. right. Yeah, we'll we'll get into that uh, second. Okay, so or it could just be same provision or different BAC. Sure. Yeah, that that's more straightforward. But but yeah, the the, the portability problem is is if if the BAC said authentication is key, then it didn't matter what you put in the service account name. But if and so if, if you put garbage in the service account name, it's going to work on the one that uses the, authentic, the key authentication, and it's not going to work on the I am. Um, yeah, but the application will know. It has bucket.json to figure out. So it can throw intelligent uh, a log message saying, hey, I'm looking for this, it's not there. No, it, 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 it won't, because if you're using an access key secret key, You'll just take the access key and secret key and go access your bucket, and it'll work, even though the even though the service account name contained garbage, right? That, that's the yeah. That's if you're the using basic I am, if you're using I am, and and it's set to key, um, then access key secret will show up empty. Right, and and at that point, if you specify the wrong service account name, access might be granted to the wrong person, and then when yeah. your pod starts up you'll have a token but it won't be the right token and you'll you'll yeah. lose access you won't have access so so the problem is is that service account name matters in some cases and doesn't matter in other cases mm -hmm. and how do you make sure that people use it correctly um i don't think we need to do any more than this um it's it's understood with uh with any web client actually 
um, if access is denied, then there's something wrong with the credentials. Um, and and yeah, all clients are yeah, have the facilities to handle with it well. Um, I think all we would expect, you know, if they just threw logs saying, hey, look, the, the, the expected a service account that uh, has access to this bucket, but it doesn't. Right. It, the, the problem is when the access is not denied. When you give it garbage credentials and you still get access, you might, it'll, it'll conceal a bug in your application, right? That, that's the problem. Um. Oh, because now the, now the idea, because credential secret name is always specified. So you're saying that, uh, yeah, if, if I give some weird account name. If, if I develop the application on a cluster that's using keys and I misspell the service account name just because of the typo, like my application will run fine and I'll be like, great, I'm done. And then when I try to move it to production and like on production, it's using I am like it'll break. And like, that'll be a surprise to me because it's like, well, but I just tested it and it worked in my staging environment. And it's it's because we're not enforcing that the service account name is correct in the key authentication system. And, and it, it feels gross to you. I, I wish there was some way that we could just like have this handled magically and not have to specify it because it just creates, it creates this possibility for getting it wrong. It's not different from, but it's not different from PVCs and storage classes. What if what if uh, I, I move from a storage class that spec that that has a file system that I need has a file system feature that I need uh, to a storage class that doesn't? Uh, there is no way for me to know until I actually open up the application, try to use that feature. Right, but but, but in in that case, like there was nothing you could have done, right? It's not a mistake you made. It's just it was never going to work. This is a situation where it's like if you so had got the service account name right, then it would have worked. It's just you, we didn't tell you. No, but you isn't got that it wrong? Yeah, if, if you got the storage class right, so storage class can specify a file system type. So, so let's say I'm I'm expecting XFS because let's say I'm using copy on write for VM management, okay, and um, that's what is I expect to be in my storage class. But then, but then I forget to put the storage class in, or I put it wrong, and uh, I end up getting um, I end up getting a different file system that doesn't have copy on write. So I end up getting very slow or you know things come to a halt but i wouldn't know until the application starts up and something goes wrong it's the same really maybe i i guess isn't it like uh, i think p people view like the exact semantics of the file system to be a relatively minor implementation detail like it, it's possible to write applications that really don't care whether they're on XFS or EXT4 or, or right, anything right. else, right? right? It's not possible to write a, an application that doesn't care if it can authenticate to the bucket or not. Like authenticating to the bucket is a required operation that no one can ignore. No, but, but all applications are actually well, uh, uh, you know, they all know to check if access is granted or not. Like every application, um, knows yeah. that uh, you know it needs to check if access is available or not. That's a, that's a common thing that that it looks for. So it's not it's not like a, a unforeseen circumstance. It's not it's not like you know it's gonna catch them uh, uh, unknown. People are gonna every every application tests for it. See, so, even so, so, the application client, you need it. So so I don't have a good answer here. So I'm trying to understand what your what your stance is. Your stance is to say it doesn't matter. Like this is just some. This is just a, you know, a sharp edge that you have to avoid cutting yourself on. But that that's. I'm even wondering um, if this is a sharp edge because it's a user error. They 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 they've put a service account. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, of course it's a user error, but like a good UI minimizes the possibility of errors. And and I I wish that there was something we could do here to steer people away from accidentally specifying something that will, will basically create bugs for them um i, I mean I, it's good to it's good to i like that uh, we're trying to improve the ui i, I really do um I, I don't see a simple solution that's why i think no, I, I, I that that's what i said yeah, i don't see a solution here i just i'm expressing my concern that it's not good enough and well, it's, and it's I, I don't know what else to say <laughs> It's noted, yeah. but I think we can move forward with this. Um, yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. can I, uh, 
why did the csi mm. adapter driver has moved or like whether now it's how why the decision was made like initially like we had some control on the application like at least the course we have but we have no no control on the application at the moment like i'm just considering for the future maybe some other feature requires some control on the application port right even with csi driver we had no control over the application code csi driver didn't give that csi driver just csi driver initially we brought it in because it was a you know it was one of the approaches to uh, keep the pod from starting um if if uh, you know if if a uh, uh, bucket wasn't provisioned yet well and, and there there was there was another reason that i remember which was we were hoping that this would eventually become like an entry feature part of kubelet where you could just specify buckets as part of your pod spec and kubelet would just do the right thing but but because we didn't want to have to fight the battle of getting through a proper entry kubernetes feature we we had decided to say well we'll prototype it as a csi plugin to prove that it can work and then if that works then we'll graduate it to the, actually moving the code into kubelet that there was a point in time and that was the the plan I, i get that that might not be the plan anymore but like that would have been a good outcome i think if if we had a path to just like making this built in and kubelet just does it for you that's still going to happen i mean the the thing that's needed to make it part of kubelet is the, the harder part there is is updating the pod api it's not yeah, yeah, i don't, I mean, think, I don't the, think you should do that in phase 1 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it, there's no but, way but, of this one to get into app at all if you try that in this one. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. the but the critical difference is that like when in a world where this is in Kubler or in a world where this is in a CSI plugin that has access to the same kind of information that Kubler has, we can do way smarter things. Like we don't have to you don't have to tell us the secret name like we can auto generate the secret and put it in a special place and retrieve yeah, it on that access. Yeah, like a phase 2. I think that's something yeah, to Yeah, they're going to be phase 2. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but it's but it's going to change the whole user interface. Like that, that, that oh, that's no, what's that's, driving that's me nuts here. We, we need to I think we still need to uh, work through a lot of other things. Other yeah. I don't tell you. This will never never enter app phase if you insist you have to get that into pods. Exactly. Yes. So, so No, I I'm not saying we have to get it into the pods. Like I'm saying like I want to design the 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 bucket no, request and the bucket no. access APIs in a way that they won't need to change when that switch over happens. So we have an API at least that will work no matter what and the implementation detail is the only thing that's changing. I think I think sometimes when we try to perfect it too much it doesn't move forward and we're already at that point. So I I don't want to go down this path anymore because yeah. it's it, we've already been pushed back by 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 the reviewers once with, with no, that don't it, don't try to get anything in that need the review from signal <laughs> thinking about the container notifier <laughs> I mean I I I, I I I hear the frustration and I I agree with it like some progress is better than spinning our wheels um and also I, I, what, what I yeah we were down this path for for so long I don't think we yeah. should actually change pass right now. I guess I guess I'm just trying to make like a I'm trying to make I'm just telling you we'll never get there, okay? If we don't I'm I'm trying to make a goal statement that like if we could design a a user facing API that was going to work across all of these implementations that would be better. And and, think, and this think, this clearly yeah. isn't that. This is this is a a user facing API that will have to change in that if we do those future things but, but a better use of our time is to get this through and then work on the kubelet one rather than the getting a cs i think perhaps going. yeah 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 so let's do that so um i think this looks good i think overall this looks good um it addresses portability of one kind let's try the other two kinds so one more portability is uh, or just the other kind which is moving the bucket itself So moving the bucket itself doesn't change from where we where, how we had it before. Let's say we're moving the bucket itself from one cluster to another, so cross cluster portability. Um, uh, the way we were saying it before is you have the bucket copied over, and then you have uh, the bucket access. Uh, actually, nothing else. Just the, if you copy over the bucket, and then on the other side, you create a new bucket access pointed to your own bucket access class. and it provisions a new bucket.json for you 
or, or you could just you don't even need a bucket access you could just copy the contents of the secret from the first cluster and use the secret directly on, a, on another cluster yeah well um and, and in that world you don't even need the bucket either right if, if you just provision a bucket and a bucket access on one cluster and then take the contents of that secret and the pod to another cluster it will work unless it's uh, iam based authentication ah yes yes if, if it's iam based so authentication, you need a new BA, which means you need a copy of the B and the BR on the on the other cluster. And yeah. then yeah, you need a second BA to be created so that you can grant access to the token there. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that addresses I think I think portability is is reasonably manageable here. Uh what are the other concerns? Let's go over them. Sid, will you make this document, your uh, drawing available so that like the SIG storage cozy so we can look at it, make comments? Yeah, um, sharing right now. I don't see a screen. What? Everything went gray. Yeah, <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh. All right. Uh, Slack. There you go. All right, it's it's available, Jeff. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have portability. Um, so, like the three major concerns are portability. Drive everything through Kubernetes API. You shouldn't have to talk anything in the back end. There's another important concern. I'm, I'm just blanking on it right now. Oh yeah, um, you know, having a difference between uh, developer-related uh, things or or what developers get to do versus what or self-service. I would say that's the word. So self-service, nothing changes on that front, right? I don't see anything changing. Um, the developer still just says, hey, here's the kind of access I want um, by specifying a service account name or leaving it empty. And um, everything else remains the same. And so uh, I have a question like the, the bucket.json, right? If I mention only key, then the service account name field, whether it will be there or like whether it, it will be there with empty value, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it will be empty. Uh, like the field will be there, but the value will be empty. Like that. Yes. Yeah, we, we can, yeah, that's just uh, marshalling. Yeah, we, we, we can even make the key go away. Yeah, I think a lot of like pretty printers will just omit the field if it's blank. Yeah. Oh, I was just trying to see how, oh, yeah, okay. All right, so I think this looks good. I think I'm gonna go update the cap right now and, and we should just move forward with this. I'm not hearing any, uh, uh, you know, any any arguments against it so i'm gonna assume it looks good yeah i mean i i, th I think it, it will work but my concern is the one i expressed that like right if this gets through and then later we decide to have a csi driver or put it in cube like i worry there's going to be redesigning at that time that's okay but yeah if you can I live mean, with I, that yeah yeah i think that's a small risk that we, we should take otherwise the cost is you know we don't do it at all Okay. All right. I like this. All right. So let me, let me work with, uh, Jeff, would you have some time to go over this today? Just the design? Yeah, I plan on doing that. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, we can, um, if, if this is all it is, uh, I think, I think we're in consensus. We, we're in agreement. Um, we can go update the cap and, uh, we can, we can reconvene next week as usual. 
um and we can actually get started on hey, next week is thanksgiving <laughs> next thursday oh really <laughs> we're already there oh my god yeah all right okay so the week after and it's almost the uh, end of the year but you can pin people to review the uh, review the cap i mean if you're done it's on the on slack right yeah yeah i'm gonna do that so yeah. just gonna quickly um actually i'm just gonna quickly actually uh, uh update the cap and, and start start bringing people okay yeah yeah so i think this this meeting this is set by sad right okay so i'll pin to cancel the meeting so that people won't show up huh? thanks yeah, <laughs> yeah th thanks Jane. all right so that's all from me uh if anyone has any objections or any thoughts about this or improvements just put it on slack we'll we'll continue the discussion there um yeah that's about it thanks everyone we can end early today thank you thank you bye thank you. bye, bye.